Effective January 1, 2023, Alberta has a new code of conduct for both teachers and teacher leaders. This video is an introduction to the new code and provides some key facts on its development. The Code of Conduct is a set of expectations that certificated teachers and teacher leaders, like principals and superintendents, must follow. It shows the overarching principles that guide everyone in the profession. Alberta's government developed a new Code of Professional Conduct because there used to be two different codes. This meant the rules and expectations were different, depending where you teach. There was one code for members of the Alberta Teachers Association, which includes teachers who work for public, separate, and francophone school authorities. The other code was for teachers and teacher leaders who are not members of the Alberta Teachers Association, which includes many of those employed in First Nation schools, public charter schools, independent schools, Alberta accredited international schools, and superintendents. The government unified the two previous codes to create one single code for everyone. In other words, there is now a clear set of principles for certificated teachers, principals, and superintendents to follow no matter where they teach. The new code means parents can be confident there are consistent standards for the whole profession, and certificated teachers and teacher leaders can be assured all of their colleagues across the province follow the same guiding rules. The process of developing the new code began early in 2022. The Legislative Assembly of Alberta passed Bill 15, the Education Reforming Teacher Profession Discipline Amendment Act, in May 2022. This legislation required a new code of conduct to be in place on January 1, 2023. The legislation also required the creation of the Alberta Teaching Profession Commission, which is responsible for investigating allegations that a teacher has broken the code. The Commission ensures complaints of unprofessional conduct are handled fairly, effectively, and transparently. The Government of Alberta knows the vast majority of teachers and teacher leaders are dedicated and responsible professionals. The new model for teacher discipline will help ensure any allegations of unprofessional conduct are handled objectively and without potential conflicts of interest. To help inform the development of the new Code of Conduct, the government engaged a wide variety of people and organizations. We knew it was important for the Code to reflect the needs and perspectives of Alberta's teachers and teacher leaders, as well as the parents and students they serve. The government used an online survey to gather people's perspectives and hosted focused group discussions with a broad spectrum of education system stakeholders and victim advocacy groups. The new code contains four categories, each with different requirements or expectations. The categories show how teachers and teacher leaders are expected to treat their students, the parents and guardians of their students, and other teachers and teacher leaders, as well as some general responsibilities to the teaching profession as a whole. Many parts of the new code have been carried over from, or are based on, parts of the previous two codes. For this reason, as well as the fact that vast majority of Alberta's teachers are passionate about their work and uphold a high degree of professionalism, the concepts and expectations in the new Code of Professional Conduct should be familiar. Teachers also receive a high degree of training on conduct as part of their education and subsequent direction and professional development through their employers. As before, the new code contains principles that are reasonable and expectations that most teachers typically follow in their daily lives. While the vast majority of teachers uphold the high standard we all have for those entrusted with our children each day, there were some behaviors that were not explicitly covered by the previous two codes. In developing the new code, the government examined codes and standards in other parts of Canada. As a result, the new code contains the following provisions that emphasize the importance of student safety. Teachers and teacher leaders are required not to intentionally harm or abuse a student verbally, psychologically, or emotionally, harm or abuse a student physically or sexually, intentionally engage in an illegal activity or other activities that may cause a student to be put at or to remain at risk of harm or abuse, 
knowingly encourage or enable a student to engage in illegal activity or other activities that may cause a student to be put at or to remain at risk of harm or abuse, teach or lead in a manner that exploits their relationship with students while in a position of authority for ideological, material, or other advantage. Taking ideological advantage means teaching students in a biased way in order to take advantage of their uninformed or underinformed opinions. It does not include teaching content from the programs of study. Two other provisions require teachers to foster a respectful learning environment where students feel welcome and to respect their basic rights. For example, most teachers are aware it's not acceptable to discriminate against students based on their race, religious beliefs, sexual orientation, and other traits. In fact, this was covered in one of the previous codes of conduct. However, the wording in the new code refers specifically to the rights that are enshrined in other legislation, such as the Alberta Human Rights Act and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The intent of these parts of the Code of Conduct is to ensure teachers and teacher leaders are clear they must respect their students and take into account their backgrounds and socioeconomic context, model acceptance and tolerance of a wide variety of people and cultures, and to show consideration for the feelings and circumstances of learners. To further ensure student safety, the new Code of Professional Conduct requires teachers or teacher leaders to notify the Alberta Teaching Profession Commission if another teacher or teacher leader harms a student. Most teachers care deeply about their students, and it's rare for them to be endangered, but when issues do occur, it's important to notify the authorities so the problem can be addressed. Apart from this provision in the Code, the Education Act ensures that other key players in the education system have a duty to report to police, including the registrar, the commissioner, superintendents, board chairs, operators of independent schools or early childhood services programs, the executive secretary of the ATA, and the executive director of the College of Alberta School Superintendents. As teachers will know, it's important to have courteous and considerate relationships with parents and guardians. The previous Code of Professional Conduct in the Practice Review of Teachers and Teacher Leaders Regulation had a section about relationships with parents, which has been reworked for the new code. Relationships with students' families must be based on mutual respect, trust, and where necessary, confidentiality. Because a healthy working relationship with a student's family often contributes to the student's learning and well-being. Since teachers are in a unique position where they are responsible for people's children each day, they're often aware of families' personal details and circumstances, and they are trusted to exercise a high level of discretion to help families maintain their privacy. Additionally, it's also reasonable to expect that teachers won't disparage or denigrate parents. The new code requires teachers and teacher leaders to respect parents and be considerate of their circumstances, treat information received from and about parents with discretion, be respectful in communications with and about parents, and not to discuss other students except where the matters being discussed are relevant to their child, and then only to the extent that, in the teacher's or teacher leader's judgment, is necessary. Lastly, requirements for how a teacher or teacher leader may address concerns about a colleague have also changed. In most cases, a teacher or teacher leader had to first advise their colleague if they wished to raise the concern about the colleague's professional conduct. This may actually discourage people from raising legitimate concerns because it could lead to a confrontation and in serious cases, it could cause a teacher to put themselves at risk. The new code of conduct allows teachers and teacher leaders, if they wish, to raise their concerns with a supervisor or other appropriate official without having to notify the other teacher first. This way, teachers and teacher leaders will be able to avoid antagonizing or provoking their colleagues. When a whistleblower has a legitimate concern, it's important for them to be free to raise it because that is the first step towards resolving the issue. The new Unified Code of Professional Conduct has modernized and harmonized standards across the province to better serve the best interest of students, the public, and the teaching profession. Teachers, parents, students, and members of the public can be confident there is a high standard of conduct for the teaching profession.
If you have any questions about the new Code of Professional Conduct, please contact the Office of the Registrar at education.registrar.gov.ab.ca.